Здравствуйте, welcome back to Russian Theory Poems and Paintings. Today is day 117, and uh, we're covering today uh, somewhat quickly what I, I, I'm calling here advanced verbs of motion. I guess, of course, there isn't really anything advanced about them per se, but they're just maybe somewhat more unusual and uh, describing kinds of motion that we maybe don't want to learn about in book one, for example, right? Things like dragging, uh, chasing, um, rolling, crawling, climbing, things like this, right? So basically all we're doing today is we're adding the remaining verbs of motion uh, to the ones we already learned before. Now, uh, keep in mind that uh, verbs of motion, again, the way we're using that term to, to refer to these uh, unprefixed verbs of motion with the three infinitives, then now we've learned how to create prefixed uh, verbs of motion, which have only the two infinitives, right? That the, the verbs that work like that are very limited in number. I think there was, what, there are 15 or something if we count them all together. There's a table in the back of the book, by the way. Um, so today we're learning all of the remaining verbs of motion. Now there are, again, there aren't any other motion verbs lurking out there. Um, now, again, just to be clear, uh, we've mentioned this before, that of course there are all sorts of verbs that involve motion. That sort of goes without saying, like even throwing or uh, stepping, for example. Um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of other examples. Well, I mean, you can think of any number of things that involve literally involve motion, but again, they're not motion verbs the way we use that term. They're not these tricky verbs with the three infinitives and, un and, and so, on, so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, so again, uh, moving forward, you can refer to the table in the back of the book, which uh, again includes all, um, all ru uh, Russian verbs of motion. Okay, so uh, let's review quickly uh, how these are working. Uh, we look here at a quick table, and we're just again um, emphasizing the fact that ordinary verbs most verbs in Russian come in aspectual pairs. Then we get unprefixed verbs of motion, as we've reviewed already, right? Three infinitives, those are the trickiest verbs in the language. Then if we make prefixed verbs of motion, we're back to two infinitives, right? An aspectual pair. There are all sorts of verbs that involve motion, but they're not verbs of motion per se, right? Like padet u pasť, okay? Those also come in pairs. Um, we, we also can prefix those, right? We can prefix verbs that involve motion but aren't really verbs of motion in our narrow sense, right? To fall into. We'll do a lot more of that kind of thing in book four, right? Where we'll, we'll take just basic action verbs and learn how to prefix them, right? So anyway, you get a nice little overview here of uh, motion verbs. Um, and again, it's the, the, the forms in the black box, the unprefixed forms, as we're calling them, that are really tricky. That's where we're choosing between the three infinitives and asking about determinate versus indeterminate and all of that stuff. Okay, now again, the verbs we're learning today, we're going to learn kind of everything about them all at once. We're going to learn the three basic infinitives, right? The, the unprefixed forms of the, the, for this type of motion. And then we're going to get our base pair for that type of motion. Now, the base pair, that's those are the forms to which we can add prefixes just the way we've been doing the past three or four days, right? So in terms, of, at least, of passive vocabulary here, we're getting a lot of bang for our buck, right? And, uh, of course, uh, as we when we start reading and things like this, we'll see these verbs all over the place, right? In, in their, both their non-prefixed and prefixed forms. Okay, let's start with a really famous painting. Um, by the way, if you want to, uh, if you're feeling nostalgia, you can look back to day 55. Uh, this painting was kind of featured as a kind of poster within a poster, right? The propaganda poster had this painting hanging on the wall. Uh, anyway, look it up. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so this painting is very famous. Uh, it's one of the most famous paintings in Russian history, probably, especially in terms of these 19th century uh, realist paintings with a kind of uh, social uh, uh, criticism built into them, right? Trying to depict uh, social injustice in a way that would shock the viewer and hopefully rally uh, support for change. Okay, so it's called Burlaki na Volge. A burlak at the Chelavia Katori Tashit Karabul Perikia. Eti Ludio Chin Biedne Ugnitione. 
Right, so there's our new verb, uh, tashit, right? They pull, and that's determinate, right? Because we see they're pulling uh, the boat down the river, right? In, in a way that's determinate, right? They're not pulling it in circles. They're not doing something like that. They're pulling it down the river, so to speak. That's what they do, right? Uh, so we'll learn this verb for pulling. Uh, that'll be our first verb today. By the way, this uh, in this painting, the figure, in the, you see most of these people just seem completely browbeaten, right? They've, uh, they're dirty, they look hopeless, uh, they're, they're older, right? And they seem like they've just given up, right? So the, the central figure here is the boy, right? He seems to be pretty young. He, and he, you see how he's, he has this note of defiance in his stance, right? It, it, he's fooling around with this strap at, almost as if he's about to throw it off, right? So that, that the stance of this boy and his, his bearing was kind of an inspiration to people who would look at this kind of thing with, with kind of revolution in mind, right? Or with radical uh, political change in mind. Okay, so let's look at this verb, our first verb today. And we'll just go through these fairly quickly, right? The bottom line is we, I'm giving you the forms and you can just learn them, hopefully, and that would be ideal. And uh, right, think about how we could add prefixes to the base pair Okay, so for pulling or dragging, our unprefixed forms are taskats, tashits, patashits. Okay, now again, that's those three infinitives are working exactly like, for example, chadits, iti, paiti, right? In terms of how we're choosing between them, what they mean, right? Everything is exactly the same. The only difference is the type of motion is so is new for us, right? Pulling, dragging. So I'll do this once and then hold my piece, right? Tuskite would mean to pull or drag around, right? Using our keyword or making a round trip dragging. Tashit would mean to drag underway, right? Determinate. Uh, Patashit would mean to set off dragging, right? Or to drag off, to pull off. Okay, now again, once we get to our, our base pair, Tuskilit, Tashit, uh, you can see, that, by the way, that Tuskevich is a derived imperfective for that base, uh, this base pair. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so we could add any, right, any prefix to that just the way we've done already, watching for the same spelling issues and whatnot. Um, but nothing, nothing new to say here really at all in terms of the grammar. Okay, let's make a couple of prefixed uh, forms here uh, to pull out. Uh, well, vu, vitaskevich, vuitashit, vuitashit, right? And the verb will be the right. Well, we have an example. On vuitashil notebook is svayvo rukzaka. He pulled the laptop out of his backpack. Pulled it out. Okay, so again, I, hopefully by now the meaning is pretty clear. We know what the prefix means. Um, so pretty easy, I, I hope. To pull across, okay, across that's pire. We dragged, literally, we pulled across, we're moving the chairs, we moved them from the kitchen into the living room. To drag far away, that's going to be U Utaskevits Utashit. Spatri Sabak Utaskevit Vayuknigu. Right, the dog is dragging your book away, he's dragging it away. Okay, let's look at a few. Now, here we're throwing in some unprefixed and prefixed forms. So let's maybe unpack them, especially for the uh, the unprefixed ones, right? The really tricky ones. But you want to sky at the sorry. But you want to sky at the tijoli rukzak vizdia saboy. Okay, unprefixed. Now let's use a keyword and unpack it. And again, the trick here really is we're trying to visualize exactly what the Russian is telling us. And uh, as we know, especially with the unprefixed verbs, that's, that can be rather tricky. Well, let's use our keyword. Why is he dragging around this heavy backpack everywhere with him, with himself, literally? Okay, kind of like in English. Why are you dragging this thing around, right? Tuskites. When I saw her, she was underway dragging, right? Looks like she was on her way to the train station on foot, 
and she was dragging right underway a huge suitcase to the train station. Три водитель поехал и потащил за собой другую машину. Okay, someone's being towed or whatever. Uh, so the, the driver set off driving. He set off in his vehicle. And he put the shield, right? He dragged off behind him another car. Okay, so setting off there. Setting off, dragging, pulling. Четыре. Он долго что-то вытаскивал из своего рюкзака, но не мог вытащить. Okay, process versus success. He, for a long time, долго, he was vitaskival, right? He was trying to pull something out of his backpack, but he couldn't do it successfully. Okay, so attempt versus success, and remember for the prefixed motion verbs, we're choosing based purely on aspect, right? No determinacy. Okay, пять. Наконец он вытащил фотографию и показал нам всем. Finally, he, again, successfully, he pulled out a photograph and showed it to us. Шесть. Все эти стулья надо перетащить из аудитории в коридор. Okay, again, we're dragging the chairs from one place to another. We're dragging, uh, we need to drag all these chairs out of the classroom into the hallway, the corridor. Всем. Uh, мы весь день будем перетаскивать эти стулья. Okay, uh, imperfective. We have a long time period here. All day. All day we're going to be dragging these chairs from one place to another. Okay. Voice him. I'm so tired. Я таскался весь день по магазинам. Okay, something a little bit different there, but hopefully we can make sense of this, right? Literally, I've, I've dragged myself. I have been dragging myself all day or around the stores, I guess, literally, right? I've, I've been dragging myself or I dragged myself all day around the stores, I guess we could say. So maybe a, a little bit hard to translate that just word for word, but I, hopefully you get the idea, right? You've been dragging yourself around all day, going from one store to another. Okay. Uh, yeah, Pachar Lev Nikolaevich Tolstoy na Pashnya. Here's the uh, Tolstoy trying to live like a simple peasant and do all the work himself. And here he is plowing. Right, so let's try to describe this with motion verbs. Всемирно известный писатель Лев Толстой родился очень богатым человеком. Right, so the world famous writer Лев Толстой was born a very wealthy person. Indeed, he was he was a count, right? Но верил, что надо жить просто и все делать сам, даже самую трудную работу. Right, but he believed that one should live simply and do everything oneself, or at least he tried to do that. Даже самую трудную работу, even the most difficult work. Здесь мы видим, как он делает работу пахаря. Right here we see how, literally, we see how he is doing the work of a plowman. Right, a пахар. Пахар – это человек, который пашет поля. Right, the person who plows fields. Толстой, okay, here's what he's doing. Он ведет лошадей и держит плуг. А лошади тащит за собой плуг и барану. Uh, right, so he's holding the plow. He's guiding the horses, right, guiding them. Ведет, they're underway. Uh, he's guiding the horses. He's holding the plow. And the first horse is pulling the plow. And the second horse is pulling a harrow, right? By the way, we use the term, we say something was a harrowing experience. That means literally it's something you feel like you've had a harrow dragged over you, right? Um, um, and I'll, every time I hear that word, I think of Kafka's short story, In the Penal Colony. Uh, read that and you'll get a very nice <clears throat> example of a harrow. At least it's called a harrow. It's not literally a harrow, but... Okay, anyway, so they're underway there. They're underway leading and pulling, and so we use determinant verbs. Okay, the next verb, um, driving and chasing. Okay, ganyat, gnat, pagnat. And the base pair is ganyat, gnat. By the way, gnat is an irregular verb. Ya ganyu, te gonish, gonit, gonim, gonite, gonit. 
Okay, so there are the forms, right? Uh, let's just make a few examples here. Prefixed forms to drive out. Okay, so let's take V, add it to our base pair. We'll get выгонять, выгнать. Выгонять, выгнать. To chase out, to drive out. Хозяйка выгнала его из квартиры. The landlady or the mistress of the apartment, whatever is going on there, she chased him out of the apartment. She kicked him out. To catch up with, okay, we're attaining someone by chasing. We're after after a chase, right? Dagonyat dagnat. So that's how you say talk about catching up with someone in Russian. Iditi iditi, right? Go on, go on. Yavas patom daganyu. I'll catch up with you later. To steal or hijack a video is literally to drive far away or to chase far away. Uh, I guess we could maybe think of this as going back to like horse thievery. I don't really know for a fact, but that would seem to stand to reason, right? You're you're chasing away someone's horse or cattle or whatever it may be. Okay, that would be uganyat ugnat. Твою машину угоняют. Звони в Звони в полицию. I started to say милиция, right, the old term. Звони в полицию. Okay, right there, stealing your car, uh, call the police. Okay, let's just read a few examples, translate, unpack, whatever. Собаки любят гоняться за белочками в парке. Right, гоняться is uh, here kind of a... Um, the reflexive particle, again, sometimes it can be a little bit hard to unpack it literally. Um, it's often used with the verb to chase something around, right? So you're just, you're chasing it around. You often get that with the reflexive particle. Um, so anyway, here we have the indeterminate, right? So they're chasing around squirrels. So we might say in English, they love to chase squirrels around the park, right? Dogs love to chase squirrels around the park. Собаки любят гоняться за белочками в парке. Okay, number two. Смотри, как та собака гонится за белочкой. Неужели поймает? Okay, now we're seeing uh, more specifically, kind of think of a snapshot uh, of a dog and he's he's hot on the trail of a squirrel, right? Собака гонится за белочкой. Okay, so we're unpacking that carefully. We might say the dog is underway chasing the squirrel, right? Kind of, let's imagine more or less in a straight line. He's chasing after the squirrel. Determinate, right there, underway. Three, террористы хотели угнать самолет, но их вовремя арестовали. Terrorists wanted to hijack the plane. Okay, so угнать, it can mean to steal a vehicle, but also to hijack a plane, right? You're, you're, taking control of it and, I don't know what, driving it off far away somewhere it's not supposed to be. Okay, so a nice little example. And by the way, we'll see lots of these where it's maybe a slightly unusual example that you might come across. And hopefully, if you know literally what the prefix means and what the whatever the basic verb is, based on context, you can see what this means. Okay, so terrorists wanted to drive far away an airplane. Okay, that makes no sense. Oh, it's hijack, right? We would say hijack. So uh, again, that, that type of skill is really important, especially as we're learning to process more of this vocabulary, uh, at least passively, right? When we see it, we can hopefully at least make sense of it. Okay, четыре. Ему показалось, что его загнали в угол. It seemed to him that they, or people, had driven him into a corner. They chased him into a corner. There's that za, this idea of kind of getting stuck somewhere, right? You're stuck in, in a corner. You can't get out. Okay, пять. Мой друг не может платить за квартиру, и поэтому его выгоняют. He can't pay for his apartment, and for that reason, literally, they are chasing him out. They're evicting him. They're kicking him out of the apartment. Okay, шесть. Бежим. Let's run. Literally, we are running. Underway. Let's run. Друзья уже пошли на концерт. Мы их догоняем. Our friends have already set off for the concert. We are trying to catch them. Right, we're trying to catch up with them. Мы их догоняем. Okay, the next verb is, uh, well, two verbs actually. Climbing, usually, and crawling. Okay, so лазить, лезть, полезть. Our base pair is лезать, лезть. 
and we see that the uh, liest, right, all these forms with liest are z, z obstruents, z obstruents. So they're going to work liezu, liezish, liezit, right, stem stress. Okay, so um, now we get another verb for uh, to crawl is the basic meaning here. Polzit, posti, popolsti, another z obstruent. That'll be in stress, palzu, palziosh, etc. And our base pair is palzait, note the stress there, palzait, palsti. Okay, uh, so to crawl out, um, let's see, vui palzait, vui palsti, right? Vui palzait, vui palsti. Krokodil medlina vui palzal iz riki, right? The crocodile was slowly climbing out of the river. To climb up onto, okay, this is za. We talked about that example of going up onto something like, right, the cat is crawling up on, or climbing onto the the wardrobe or the cabinet or whatever it is, a shkaf. That'll be zalizait zaliest. Na shakoshka vsyovremi zalizait na shkaf. Our cat is always crawling up onto, again, think of the vertical hooking motion. It's going up. But then it's hooking over horizontally to get onto the top of the uh, whatever it is, a cabinet. To arrive by crawling. Okay, arrival, that's going to be pri. Pri polzait, pri polsti. Moi sasied pri pols da moi včera včas noči. Okay, sound like, sounds like someone did a, too, a bit too much partying. And at one in the morning, can you imagine coming home at one in the morning? That is just unheard of. It's so late. All right, so our neighbor crawled home. He arrived home by crawling at one in the morning. Unbelievable. Okay, uh, let's just read a few sentences and imagine what exactly is going on here. Ребенок еще не умеет ходить, но он уже ползает по всему дому. Okay, so the child doesn't know how to walk yet, but he's crawling all over the house. He's crawling around throughout the entire, the whole house. Okay, so that's obviously crawling indeterminate on pulls it, pulls it. Number two, после сумасшедшей вечеринки мы ели да ползли домой. After the crazy party, this party was just insane, right? Сумасшедшая вечеринка. После сумасшедшей вечеринки мы ели да ползли домой. We barely crawled our way home, right? So again, the idea there was do is we we made it home finally by crawling, so to speak, after a rather, uh, you know, difficult journey. Okay, three. Bielka всегда влезает ко мне в окно. Она ищет еду, наверное. Okay, a squirrel is always climbing into my window. Okay, влезает, right, they're always getting into my window, climbing into my window. Often, by the way, this verb climbing in Russian has, has this connotation of going somewhere you're not supposed to be. Like, uh, you know, why are you getting into my business? That that type of thing. We'll often use a climbing verb with that. So we could think of that that here, maybe in a certain sense. Right? The, the squirrel is always climbing into my window. Astajmenyev pakoya. Right? Leave me in peace. Leave me alone. Okay, there's an example, right? Why are you underway climbing, right? Why are you climbing into a matter that's not yours, right? Right, meaning why are you getting involved in other people's business? Okay. A nice pastovit says, v means literally he or she will not climb into their pocket for a word, right? Kind of sounds funny when you translate it literally, they won't climb into their po their pocket to fetch a word. It means basically someone is never at a loss for words, meaning they'll never have to reach into their pocket to pull out a word. It's always on the tip of their tongue or whatever. Okay, uh, finally, rolling or riding. Okay, uh, so this basically means rolling. Now here we get uh, actually two verbs one without the particle and one with it. Okay, so here all we have to worry about is the issue of transitivity. Okay, you can roll something in English, like to roll a ball, or Sisyphus rolling the stone up the... Uh, Sisyphus. Yeah, yeah, Sisyphus. I was, Sisyphus or Tantalus. Of course, Sisyphus rolling the stone up the mountain. 
Or you can say that the ball is rolling, right? The, the stone rolls down the mountain again. So we, here we have another example. We've talked about this before, how in English so often we use the exact same verb for both transitive actions like rolling a stone and intransitive. The stone is rolling, right? It's, it's kind of rolling all by itself spontaneously. In Russian, we have a very clear distinction where we don't in English. Okay, so the first verb here, katats, katits, pokatits, and then our base beer, katavits, katits, that has to do with rolling something, right? Making something else roll. Uh, that's relatively rare, although you can hear it, of course. If you are going for a roll, right? Going for a spin, this can also mean riding, right? Going for a ride, that would need the reflexive particle. Kaitatsa, kaititsa, pokatitsa. And our base pair would be katavitsa, kaititsa. So the most common use for this in Russian is going for a ride, right? Uh, uh, you think of it as, uh, you know, for, for a spin on something with maybe with wheels that are rolling, going for a ride. And we'll use that a lot, actually, in one of our short stories, our Chekhov stories. Okay, to roll in two, we're going to say the ball rolled into the sewer. Okay, so again, a good example, it somehow, maybe somewhat improbably, it rolled into the sewer and now it's stuck there, right? So for many reasons, we get za. The pair would be zakatavitsa, zakatitsa, right? Miach zakatilsiv kanalizatsu. Number two, to go for a ride. Okay, this is kind of idiomatic. It means sort of through, literally. We're using pro in a sense that's kind of idiomatic here. It means to go for a ride. We may also have seen prachaditsa, um, praitis. That can mean for, to go for a stroll. If we haven't seen that, we you will when you read literature or whatever. It's quite common. Okay, anyway, um, this will be prakatiwitsa, prakatitsa. Давай прокатимся на санках. Let's go for a ride on a sled. Okay, number three, to take for a ride. Okay, now again, literally we're saying something like here, to roll the children, right? We're causing them to roll. We're making them roll. Or again, uh, to translate a bit more elegantly, we're taking them for a ride, right? Okay, so we don't need the particle here because we're doing this to someone else. Прокатывать, прокатить. Давай прокатим детей на санках. Let's take the kids for a spin. Let's take them for a ride on this on a sled. Okay, some more examples. Туристы в Петербурге любят кататься по каналам на катерах. Okay, a катер is a uh, well, it's a, a, a ship that's used for little tours in the canals in uh, Petersburg, right? So tourists in Petersburg love to ride along the canals in in these boats. Okay, so we're using here katats because we're talking about just the general activity, right? Tourists like to go for rides on these boats in Petersburg. Господи, какие у нас политики? Куда мы катимся? Okay, it sounds like someone complaining about politics, right? Oh, Lord, what kind of politicians we have, right? Oh, what kind of politicians, literally, meaning, God, the politicians we have. Куда мы катимся? To where are we rolling, literally, right? Where is this world headed to? Where is this country headed to with politicians like that? Okay, so that's, again, a kind of an example. You know, some of these examples are a bit weird, but I really chose them kind of on purpose because the idea is, again, we're going to be encountering these verbs with prefixes or without or whatever in all sorts of different contexts, and we want to just be analyzing them and, based on context, trying to, to see, first of all, what they're literally saying to the Russian ear and then maybe how we would translate that into, into good English, right? Okay, so number three. Давай прокатимся на американских горках. Let's go for a spin. Let's go for a ride on American mount, American hills or American mountains. Uh, that's the Russian Amerikanske Gorky for a roller coaster. It's kind of funny, American hills. And uh, ironically enough, I believe the French for a roller coaster is uh, montagne russe, right, of R R Russian mountains. Okay, so isn't that, isn't that weird, right? The French call them Russian mountains. The Russians call them uh, American mountains. Okay, Chitiri. Vesna prishla, right? Spring has arrived. Moy sin uje vykatavit samakat iz garaja. 
My son is already rolling his scooter out of the garage. Okay, it's scooter season again. Okay, note that we don't have the reflexive particle here because the, the kid is rolling out his scooter. He's making it roll out. It's not that he's he himself is going for a, a ride or something. Okay, number five. Benzin kончился. The gas has run out. Машину докатили до ближайшей заправки. They rolled the car to the nearest gas station. Again, transitive, right? No reflexive particle because they made the car roll. They rolled the car, or I guess in English we'd say they pushed the car or whatever to the nearest station. Okay, another verb that's kind of related, it also means kind of to, to roll or spin, but in a disorderly fashion. So often, think of this as your tumbling verb, tumbling. Now you can make something tumble, also in the sense of knocking something over, right? And there it goes tumbling down or whatever, tumbling over, tumbling down, rolling around, tumbling, right? You can make something tumble, that would be without the reflexive particle, or something can be tumbling, that would add the particle. And we could also think of that passively, passively, right? To be tumbled, to be knocked over, or whatever. Okay, but in any case, intransitive. Valiac, valic, povalic, valivic, valic is our base pair. And again, with the particle, intransitive. Valiac, valic, povalic, valivic, valic. Okay. Um, now, again, a lot of these verbs, they'll be used in all sorts of ways. We can't list every last one here. But one thing you'll notice is that... Um, this, these valich verbs are often used in a sort of a slang fashion, uh, you know, kind of an informal fashion, basically just to mean to go, right? So, for example, valiatsiuda is just basically kind of a, you know, kind of a rude way to say, get out of here, you know, roll out of here, roll yourself out of here or something. Um, okay, let's translate a few, unpack a few sentences. Что за бардак? Почему у тебя все, все вещи валяются на полу? Okay, literally, we could maybe say, why are your things rolling around on the floor? Why are they tumbling around on the floor? Uh, indeterminate. So we get kind of the key word, they're lying around, they're tumbling around. Okay, so in English, when things are lying about like that, there's a big mess. We say, well, they're lying around on the floor. The Russian idiom uh, is often to use valyatsa, Literally, they are rolling around on the floor or tumbling about, right, in disorder. Okay, now, of course, it doesn't mean they're literally moving. It just means that, you know, well, although we can sort of think there's a bunch of stuff on the floor. We say it's just rolling around on the floor, right, in, a, in disorder. Okay, number two. Он хотел встать, но опять повалился. Нельзя столько пить. Okay, so повалить, without the particle, could mean to knock something over, right, to make it tumble. To knock it over. Here, the guy himself is intransitively, spontaneously, spontaneously tumbling over. Right? He wanted to get up, but he fell down again. One shouldn't drink that much. Three. Случилась ужасная авария. Машина свалилась с моста в канал. Right? A terrible accident has happened. A car tumbled down. It tumbled down from the bridge into the canal, or it fell into the canal, okay, in a kind of disorderly, chaotic, disastrous way. Svalilis. Machina svalilis. Okay, uh, now take that, right, with the particle, and let's use the same verb without the particle, and we see again that it's transitive. Uh, and again, it may seem a bit weird, but this is a pretty common verb, right? To, to make something tumble down. Well, what on earth could that mean? Они всегда сваливают всю работу на нас, надоело. They always literally tumble all the work down onto us. Okay, this is basically, again, now we've unpacked that literally. Uh, this is basically the Russian verb for dumping, right? So a dump truck, you know, d dumping something in the garbage heap or whatever. That's сваливает, свалит, right? Literally to make tumble down. Okay, so this is like in English we say they, they dump all the work on us. They dump everything in our laps. Они сваливают всю работу на нас. Okay, our last verb today, I'm only just giving it to you. I'm not even going to give you any examples because it's just 
quite unusual. And, you know, you will see it again. You shouldn't think that it's never used, um, but it's not that common, and especially the prefixed forms. The prefixed forms are almost never seen. Now, again, they do exist, so it's not like they're, they're never used. They are used, but especially for just intermediate learning, I think it's not really worth going into a bunch of examples. The verb is basically roaming, so it really is the same thing as kind of going on foot, but kind of in a, you know, like to roam, you're wandering, or you're kind of shuffling around, maybe in a somewhat, I don't know what, casual manner, or kind of going about your way, you're roaming, you're rambling. Okay, so I think everyone gets the sense of that. The forms are bradit, bristi, bobristi. The base pair is bridat, bristi, but... Let's just leave it at that. Now, in the textbook, there's an example from a Pushkin poem, right? Bradit, ulitz shumnich, right? When I wander, wander or roam down noisy streets, when I roam along noisy streets. Okay, so there is an example in Pushkin where, of course, we're seeing this verb bradit, uh, to roam around, right? But again, relatively unusual. So I think that's all that needs to be said about it at this point. Okay, so that's quite a milestone now. This is one of these things in, in uh, Russian that I like to say, you know, uh, I feel dirty using the word anymore, but we can quarantine these motion verbs, right? Um, I use that in the sense that we've got something kind of very difficult and kind of dangerous, and the temptation is, again, to think that every time we use almost any verb involving motion, it's going to be a motion verb. And we're thinking, we're choosing between three infinitives, and we've got the prefix forms and all this stuff, but... No, we've seen now all of the Russian verbs of motion. There are not any more, I promise you. Right, so again, going forward, if you're wondering, well, is this a motion verb? Well, look up the table in the back of the book. You have a table there of all your motion verbs, including the prefix verbs that you would use to make prefixed motion verbs, right? That's it. Okay, so moving forward, we have no more mo motion verbs to learn in all of Russian. Um, now, again, while some of the ones we learned today may seem a bit unusual, if you're really serious about Russian, it's well worth really trying to learn these actively. Uh, again, now that we know how prefixation works, we really don't have that many forms to learn here, just a few infinitives and the base pairs, and we can uh, hopefully actively create, but also at the very least make sense of these as we encounter them, and we're going to be seeing them just all over the place, meaning all sorts of different things. Okay, so um, that's it for today. Until next time, do svidaniya.